Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. Uh, I believe that there's more to life than looking good, but you've got to look good too. So today is definitely going to be a look good video because this face cannot go outside. I am going to Ikea later because I need to pick up some things from my new kitchen that my husband and I are working on. So that is very exciting. Um, and it doesn't matter that I'm going to hang out with a bunch of strangers, I suppose, because his face cannot go out looking like this. So I'm gonna do a get ready with me today, pretty much start to finish, but I'm gonna throw in some reviews of some mostly new products. I mean, not every single thing is brand new, um, but uh, a bunch of it is new. And so um, I've got some, this is not a first impressions. I've used these products before and I've got some things to say. I don't love all of them. So here we go. Okay, so, oh, and if I've got, comparable um, products in mind. I'm not even gonna call them dupes because I really, I really, I hate the word dupes because they're not. It's not a duplicate, it's just similar. And in fact, I'm gonna call them remind me's. You know, a particular product reminds me of something else is, is kind of where I'm going with that. So, okay, I, let me just say this. My skincare, typically every morning, like when I'm getting ready to, for the day or to go out to work or whatever, my skincare occurs about an hour or so before. So when I get into my um, beauty room, because uh, you know, we all have a beauty room. <laughs> I never had a beauty room before. Apparently I have one now. It's actually my beauty room, office, workout room, kind of a whole bunch of things all in, all in one spot. Anyway, um, my beauty routine occurs typically uh, about an hour before. So I like to, I don't want to put on more layers of moisturizer, but I do want to add some hydration and moisture to my face. So I've been using by Garnier, their Skin Active line. This is their Soothing Facial Mist. It is vegan, made with rose water, without parabens, dyes, or silicones. And I basically, why do we make that ugly face? <laughs> I basically use it just to kind of bring some water and hydration to my face you can press it in if you hit, hit a spot a little bit too much or not. Um, there's a lot of kind of facial mists out there now that aren't meant to set your makeup or like keep makeup in place. Um, that one specifically is a hydration one. You'll also see them as primer waters. I think Smashbox has one. Um, it reminds me if you were going a little bit more... Um, I don't want to say upscale. It's just more money. Uh, by Urban Decay, their Quick Fix is just a little trial size that I had gotten. But this one, so the Garnier one has rose water in it, which I like. This one has coconut water in it. They both smell really great. Um, P.S. Stuff about when it comes to fragrances, they always say like, you know, they, you always aim for like fragrance free and stuff. Honestly, the fragrance adds to my experience and it's why I enjoy um, things that smell. So as long as it doesn't irritate your skin, I typically go for it. So I'm also going to add my eye cream. I don't do it in the bathroom in the morning because I don't want to put the facial products like AHAs and BHAs, uh, alpha hydroxy acids and all those kinds of guys. I don't want to rub them into my eye. So ideally I've since washed my hands. Now I'm going to put some eye cream on. This one I've been using is the one by Ula Henriksen. It's the Truth Ula Henriksen Ula Henriksen Truth Banana Bright Eye Cream. I don't really care that it's brightening or not. I just, I, I like the idea of it. I'm using one of my mini spatulas so that I can scoop it out and not scoop it underneath my fingernail. Ew, that's gross. And I'm gonna be using it, I use it around my eyes, I use it under my eyes to brighten, and I use it actually on my lids as well because I can get dry, flaky, um, eyelids as well so and it's an eye cream so it's friendly I always kind of put down an eye base so but it doesn't really matter even if it adds too much moisture honestly like you cannot have crusty eyelids that is nasty so I like this one by Ula I always use his um, truth vitamin C serum and so um, I'm thoroughly enjoying his eye cream as well there are actually some eye creams out there that that irritate my eyes and so that one does not and I like it so I'm using the same spatula and after this I will put this spatula away to either be discarded or washed um, before I use it again I depotted the Tarte smoothing primer oh no wait I like the Tarte smoothing primer see I'm like on autopilot mode because I have five million things I need to do today um, so I'm not thinking what I wanted to use and talk about because I already talked about how I like the Tarte smoothing primer um, but I did get um, 
this one by CoverGirl. It's the True Blend Base Business. That is hilarious. Um, it is the Pore Minimizing Primer. Um, it's purple for some reason, but isn't like color correcting in any way. I don't know why. Um, it's purple, but whatever. So I only use pore smoothing primers right around my nose and actually on the side of my nose. That's where I have like the largest pores ever. Um, I like this pore smoother, um, uh, this primer, this pore minimizing primer. Um, it's thin, like the Tarte Smoothing Primer is quite a bit thicker. This one is thin. This one does have a fragrance as well. It's not a bad fragrance, but I'm just saying it has a fragrance. Um, and it does a decent job. Um, the Tarte, I feel, goes in like major and smooths you out. And the one by CoverGirl um, just kind of does like a decent job. So I mentioned in my favorites video, I will link that, how I have been loving by NARS, the Radiance Primer. P.S. You might want to have small children leave the room right now because this is about to get scary. Whenever I touch my face, it turns bright red. I have like touch sensitivity or something. So this is why I oftentimes don't prime on camera and I just, I'm like, whatever, I'm doing the whole thing. So let's just do it. Like, I don't care. I'm beyond that. I'm 41 years old. Like who cares at this point? So this primer for some reason has a tint to it also. It's like peach, but it really doesn't do much of anything. I don't, I don't really know why it has the peach tint. Um, okay. So this primer, I mentioned, like I said, I mentioned this in my favorites. This is a radiance primer that doesn't actually bring radiance. It just kind of doesn't dry you out. It adds like a little bit of not moisture, but just, it's just, I find it that it works really, really well for my combination skin. I do use it on my chin, which is where my skin is the driest. And then I use it on my cheeks where my skin is the oiliest. My forehead's like neutral. It doesn't pull either way. Oh yeah. That's bright red. That is so awesome. Look how different it is from the color of my neck. Oh my gosh. Um, what I also like about this primer is that when you're done, it, uh, it's not slippery and slimy, but it's not tacky either. It's like the perfect combination of what should be sitting underneath your makeup. So what I want to talk about and use next is what everybody is talking about nowadays. And I have an opinion about it, of course. Um, I have the new foundation from L'Oreal. It's the infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation with an SPF of 25, which is great. Um, I'm going to be using with it the L'Oreal beauty sponge. Now I've used, you know, I don't live for makeup sponges. I've used um, beauty blenders. Um, maybe I don't like, may, and I feel like I'm doing a logic proof. Maybe I don't like beauty sponges because I don't prefer the one by Beauty Blender. So we're going to try the one by L'Oreal. Um, Jam Beauty 89 talks about how she loves this one by L'Oreal a ton. Plus I love the color. So cute. I also like the shape. I like how it gets really pointy at the top. So we're going to use that with the L'Oreal foundation. Now, I have a comment about this foundation. First of all, I went on the website and I read the description about it. They call themselves a full, a medium to full buildable coverage. I, this is not a full coverage foundation. Stop calling it that. It's not full coverage foundation is when you, you need a full coverage foundation. Like when you realize you're putting on more concealer than foundation, it is to make you use a full coverage foundation when you when your face is violent, kind of like my face is violent today right now, by the way, like I am broke out like all over the place. So to me, a full coverage foundation, instead of going in and following a medium or light to medium coverage foundation, you then go in with concealer only where you have some trouble. Um, this does not do it. You do. This will not like you will still see like all of my mess, all of my violence that my skin is. Today would probably be more of a full coverage day, full coverage foundation day for me, um, which isn't always. I don't always use it. I don't always, I like this sponge though, by the way. <laughs> this is nice. It's so, it's not rounded. It's cause it's kind of like almost flat at the bottom. It looks a little bit like a weeble. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Oh my God, hi, that dates me. But, um, when you need full coverage, you need pigment, not product. So they're like, it's a medium coverage, but it's buildable. No, I don't want to add another entire layer of foundation. 
Um, I need pigment if I need a full coverage foundation. So this to me is a medium coverage foundation. Um, and that's fine, but please don't call it a full coverage foundation. Cause if you think this is full coverage, then you don't have crappy skin, honestly, is, is my, is my impression of that. Because it doesn't, it does a nice job of veiling where you've got trouble, but doesn't, doesn't cover. So, but let me just say. It is, it is a very nice foundation. And I use this most days, like especially when my skin isn't like out of control crazy. But again, when I need full coverage, I'm using like the Jouer High Coverage Concealer or the Laura Mercier um, Flawless Fusion or the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. Those are full coverage foundations. You need less product and get major pigmenting color. This is still, you know, not a ton of product. It feels really nice. It's not matte. It's not um, dewy either. So in that regard, I love it. And in fact, I do love the foundation, not a full coverage foundation. So um, I do need to hold, please. Um, go in with concealer. This is not new because I will never try anything else. This is the NARS Soft Matte Creamy Concealer. Um, and so now I need to go in um, and conceal. Wait, I didn't do my chin. Did you notice I didn't do my chin? I did not do my chin because I do not like to use the infallible foundation on my chin because my chin itself, uh, like I said, is where it's dry. The infallible foundation has like three oil absorbers or something. Um, and because of that, it absorbs too much oil on my chin. And so I go in with the Hourglass is Old Hourglass uh, Vanish Seamless Foundation Stick. It's where I need, happen to need a little bit more coverage today anyway, but I go around my mouth where I am super dry is where I put that foundation. So yes, there are many days where I use two different foundations, but only because I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to have um, full coverage all over, but I, I can't have only medium coverage all over. So. See, that did a nice job. That covered up that little mountain I had growing on my chin. Um, but this guy right here, you can kind of still see him. So to me, that is the difference between medium and full coverage foundation. So because I don't want to add concealer though to my entire face, it's not a big deal day for me. I'm not really gonna see anybody I know, so I don't care. I am just gonna go in a little bit with the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I'll cover a little bit more where I need to. This, by the way, is absolutely the best concealer ever. It stays in place. I'm in the shade Custard, and it just matches me beautifully. I'm using by e.l.f. their, I think this is the concealer brush. Yeah, the Flawless Concealer Brush. And I used to use really tiny pointed concealer brushes until I realized that it literally was just like adding like a highlight to what I was trying to this kind of blends it in around kind of around the same area so okay so we are whiting ourselves out that is awesome um, so yeah I love the sponge and I don't usually like this kind of annoys me because now I got to make a trip to the bathroom to wet my sponge now every day because I was historically using the stands up sorry this is dirty even though I washed it like three days ago um, I was using the stands out beauty sponge which I love but you can use it dry and you can also use it kind of as a, a final step just to get kind of everybody blended in okay next I found for myself I don't know how long it's been out but I found my lips are so white I found um, a new concealer and it caught my attention it's by covergirl when I think of drugstore concealer I think of Maybelline, obviously the Age Rewind and the Fit Me even. Um, this one by CoverGirl caught my eye because it's called the Simply Ageless Instant Fix. Um, it's got hyaluronic acid in it though. I have a fuzzy on my nose. It has hyaluronic acid in it and I, ironically, have what I would consider to be dry under eyes. So I tried it. Um, it is got this little, little, uh, little tiny sponge guy at the top. You know how the Age Rewind dispenses product throughout the entire top of the sponge. This one has a little hole. Never mind. <laughs> this one has a little hole at the top the, uh, where the product comes out. Um, so is it 
uh, sanitary to have the sponge. I mean, honestly, I don't wash my brushes every day, so give me a break. Give me a fat break. Um, I like this concealer. I do find that it doesn't dry me out so very much underneath my eyes. You can use it straight from the sponge. You can touch your brush with it. Um, I am going to prime the top of my eyes with it as well because I don't need to have a major primer on my eyes. I like that it has the hyaluronic acid in it um, for moisture underneath your eyes. Um, I'm just using a Morphe brush and I'm going to blend that in. So this happens to be a light concealer. Light to medium, I would say. Um, typically I do go for a full coverage concealer, except when I'm not wearing major heavy coverage foundation. So like if you need to, if you were using a tinted foundation, a tinted moisturizer or like a BB cream, this, um, this concealer would actually work really well with that, I think. If you were wearing like a full coverage concealer, then I don't recommend this concealer because it's a little bit different. I have to tell you, honestly, it reminds me a ton of the new concealer that, they, that uh, Too Faced put out, the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This actually has, I believe it's coconut water in it, also hydrating um, in and of itself. I'm in the shade right now, um, light. I'm gonna get that to dumb down a little bit because that's, that's pretty bright. Um, but I find that my under eyes are very happy towards the end of the day and not quite so dried out. Um, I'm not saying this concealer doesn't crease. I think all concealers crease, honestly, no matter what you do. So, um, but I like that concealer for a light drugstore concealer with that added hyalur hyaluronic acid. I think that's pretty cool. So. I'm going to blame Kristen Game. I will link her down below. She's fabulous and hilarious and sweet and everything. She is responsible for making me own a very expensive powder. I finally bit the bullet and bought the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. Do you notice a theme under my eyes? So this powder has silica in it, which I just talked about in my Fenty and Maybelline Fit Me loose powder uh, video, which I will link. Um, and how I think silica is the magic blurrer, um, which I think they've already figured out before me. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put it in their products. Um, so this has silica in it, so it blurs, and it also has hyaluronic acid in it, so it keeps you somewhat moisturized. Now, you could use this on your entire face. I don't make that much money, honestly. It's $60 for this little mini tub here. I don't know how many ounces it is, um, but it was 60 bucks. It took me a long time to de decide to buy it, but now that I have, honestly, my under eyes have never looked better. So as I was saying, you could use it to set your entire face. I can't afford that. <laughs> um, especially since I wound up liking some other things um, to set my face with. So um, I did talk and review, uh, talk about and review the Fenty, um, the Fenty Beauty powder, which I have in the shade Butter. Um, it also has silica in it, but it also has talc, so it absorbs a little bit of oil, um, but does a really nice job of blending. So I use it, I, I put it on after my under eye setting powder. One, because I put that powder on first so that it sets my under eye. But also, I have the shade um, Butter. The Fenty powder is actually like tinted, has a little bit of tint to it, it's not translucent. So I use it quite a, not quite a bit, but I use it underneath my eye as well, um, just to kind of, if it, like if my concealer is too bright, it like just dumbs it down a little bit, which, which I like because sometimes you don't need to look like a raccoon. So, um, oh, I forgot. Even though I don't set my entire face, I do set my chin with the By Terry powder. I'm gonna use that same under eye powder brush and set my chin as well. So I need all the moisture I can get underneath my nose, basically. Um, okay, so let's see. Canvas, what I call the canvas, is done. So now I'm ready to start doing my eyes because that's where I start. So it's all fingerprinted. I got by Marc Jacobs the Stiletto um, Shadow Palette. I'm going to move it because it's very reflective. Um, I think the Marc Jacobs eyeshadow palettes are incredible. 
This is the one that's a little bit cool toned. So I'm asking you in advance when I'm done with this eye look, please tell me if the cool shades look okay on me. Because when it comes to olive or slightly yellow toned skin, which is what I have, I worry and wonder about how um, cool toned shadows will look. So I'm kicking it old school. I went back to some of my MAC brushes because I've realized how much I love natural fiber brushes. Sorry, not all of them are or many natural fiber brushes are cruelty free. I don't think the MAC ones were when they were made, but don't quote me on that. I don't recall hearing that MAC is declaring their cruelty free. I actually don't know either way. But I bought this many years ago and did not buy it new. In fact, I don't even think you could get it new um, because I think they got rid of all of their natural fiber brushes. Anyway, so I'm going to start with, let me see, I'm going to start with this lightest shade and I'm going to go, I'm going to make that my transition color. So the Marc Jacobs shadows are, there is a bit of powder pickup. I think that's what makes it or makes them as good as they are. I think if a shadow has powder pickup, I believe them to blend nicely. What gives them their color is the pigment that they use or the pigments that they use. And so if you have the right combination of pigments, and, and softness, like blendability, then I think you've got an amazing powder. I think Anastasia comes very close to that, except for the fact that my gut always says every time I use a Marc Jacobs palette, um, it just blends so nicely. So I, I don't know how, not that Anastasia doesn't, but every time I use Marc Jacobs, I'm like, oh my God, these blend so great. Um, whew, I don't even know what I'm doing today. Okay, so there is a very fancy, very glittery um, shadow in there. I've seen other people use it and it's quite intense. I'm not sure Ikea could handle it. <laughs> but there is a nice shimmer shade in here too. So um, I'm gonna go and take that other brownie shade and then I'm gonna use that shade in my crease just to add a little bit more dimension there. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put it in like my crease, like kind of above the line itself. Woo, that's dark. That is pigmented, holy cow. That, <laughs> they're either like the, the colors and the powders in this palette, they're either like brown with a hint of gray or like gray with a hint of purple, which that's pretty and not really like anything else that I have. So there's a lot of pigment right now I'm seeing. And so I'm going to go in with a very soft brush. This is by Sephora. I don't think you can get this anymore. It's the Pro Crease Brush number 10. And I'm just going to kind of wipe over it. But so you see what's so cool? Like the pigment doesn't disappear. It gets a hair lighter, but there's other brands that I use. Sometimes it's MAC, sometimes it's Makeup Geek. Um, Makeup, Geek's, Makeup Geek's mattes, I don't love them. I love Every single one of hers that has shimmer or like her foiled shadows are beautiful, but her mattes tend to wipe away. So um, Mark does not. Mark is around for the entire party. So I uh, just want to make sure I'm still recording. Yes, because wouldn't that be awful if it like magically stopped on its own? Okay, so I'm going to take a very small brush. I'm going to take that purpley shade. I'm going to use that just on the outer portion of my eye just a little bit I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit apparently I can't talk and do that at the same time because it's it's fine detail work people you don't need this 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 color cannot go where it doesn't belong because then because it's so pigmented look out you won't be able to take it off wow Ikea is in for a uh, a show today. I think the shadows themselves though, I just, I can't get over how well they blend. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm so curious to see what it's going to look like when I'm done. And honestly, you guys, if you think Gina should not touch cool tone shadows, please do say so because I need, I, I really want, you know, like I ask, I really want honest opinions. Like I asked my husband, honey, you look beautiful. He says that all the time. The first thing in the morning when I wake up looking like a troll, he's like, you look beautiful in the morning. I'm like, 
Lying to me was not part of the vows. You got to be careful. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in with this uh, kind of shimmery shade that looks like it's the, the foundation of the entire. I'm afraid this is going to be too shimmery. Mm. Well, it's not too bad. It is a little bit icy, but what's nice is that it does kind of go with. And it's more like a shimmer and not a... Um, it's like it's not like a glitter. It's not like a pressed glitter. It's just a very icy. Wow, against my olive toned eyelids, it is making quite an impression. Mm. I'm using a MAC 242 brush to just kind of set it down. And now I'm going to go back in with that original color and a very soft brush, a uh, very soft and small brush, and just use that to kind of. He's like kind of the, he's the blender. He goes in and he just kind of makes sure everybody blends together, that there's no harsh lines in between. Okay, last color. I'm a little, I feel like out of my element. I'm going in with that brow bone highlight color is the only thing I can call it because that's where I'm putting it. I'm using it to highlight my brow bone. It is a matte shade. So even, let me say this, even with shadows that are like, that are, that not, that are not even comfortable for me, I still think the eye look came out nice because the shadows are so beautiful. There's also a black. Um, I don't go in that harsh. I feel like there's enough coolness going on here right now. So um, next, what I want to do is, what do I want to do? I want to, I don't know where it is. I want to line, I was going to line my eyes, except I can't find my liner, but you know what? It wasn't new anyway. It was the one by, um, I use the Kat Von D tattoo liner all the time. Okay. We're going to go in with the black apparently because I can't find my liner. I'm going to take the $1 elf concealer brush. I'm going to go into the black and I'm just going to line by stamping my upper eyelid just so that it kind of fills in any gaps I have with my lashes. Well, that came out nice. I think when you are applying a shadow as a, um, kind of like a liner, your success with it rests with the brush because if you have too big a brush or too small or whatever the case is, it won't appropriately fill. It won't, it just won't look like a line. It potentially can look like a mess. Um, but I find that this $1 uh, elf, elf? Yeah, $1 elf brush works really good for that and creates a really nice soft line. Hey. <laughs> I promise you I do not say that to myself on a regular basis. Um, okay, I'm going to do my lashes now. I talked about in my favorites how I love the collab um, pink mascara. It's called the Works. I also have the High Rise Mascara, which is the lengthening, lengthening mascara. I live for the one by L'Oreal, the telescopic. You've seen me talk about that a hundred times. Um, this lengthening one is interesting. I do go in with it first. I'm using the same technique that I always do. I go in with a lengthening mascara and then I follow with a volumizing more at the base. What I find with this lengthening mascara, especially in comparison to the one by L'Oreal, is that the first coat doesn't do well. It's a very tacky mascara. That's what I find so interesting. Um, so when you go in with the first coat, it does a little bit of lengthening, which I didn't understand at first. And in fact, I was mad at it at first because I was like, hello, where's my length? And I let it dry for a hot minute. And when I went in with the second coat, so I'm going to let that sit there. When I went in with the second coat, um, it like got stuck in a good way to the mascara that was already there and added quite a bit of length. So let me do my brows. I also mentioned in a favorites, um, how I love the Urban Decay Brow Blade Mascara. This one's interesting to work with. I also have on hand the, mas the um, brow pencil by CoverGirl. The CoverGirl, I have Honey Brown. The ultra fine brow pencil. Right now we're gonna we're gonna use it strictly for the spoolie because that is kind of frustrating that it doesn't have one on the um, 
on the one by Urban Decay. Honestly, I think it should because the the ink, there's like a, it almost looks like a liquid eyeliner on the other end. I'm not sure like I love it, but you know what? Honestly, I wind up using it. And so um, I use it mostly, I always find that pencil is hard to do on the top line of my brow where I need to fill in on the top because when I use a pencil, I find that it just draws too much of a line. The ink also works nicely inside your brow, provided you just use it gently. So I use the ink side on the top to give my brows a little dimension or width wherever they're a little bit thin, typically around my arch. And it's just, it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of touching. Like you do not draw a line. Please do not draw a line. Whoa. Okay, so I use the pencil side, um, which I think is a fabulous pencil, which is why they could kind of put a spoolie on the other end and get rid of the ink. I'd be all right with that. I use the pencil. It's softer than the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Do you see me, by the way, talking and doing my brows at the same time? I'm kind of really impressed um, with my own self. <laughs> So I use it to um, bring my, make sure my brows get more over the edge of my eye as well as um, lining underneath. Cause your line underneath can be a little bit stronger than the line you build on the top. I have the shade right now, Taupe Trap, and they call it universal. I think it's a little bit dark. I'm used to the Taupe by Anastasia which is, do you do this? Like I do this to make sure my eyebrows um, are pretty even. This side needs a little bit more. Um, I find that this one is a little bit dark, which is why I have a spoolie nearby because I think the way to lighten up or blend in your brows is to go back in with a spoolie on top of it. Usually I used to only have to do it in the center just to, to kind of soften that up, but when I've got the ink line now on the top, you can use a spoolie to kind of soften that out. So overall, depending on what kind of brow or lack of brow you have, um, that's a pretty decent brow pencil. Did you see me do that and talk at the same time? So now I'm going in with the Collab Lengthener again, the green, and I'm adding a little bit of length or like a lot more length. I think, I think the round, I think the second coat is where the power of this mascara is at. Now that might be high maintenance for you. I think you can do this much easier if you were to use the telescopic mascara by L'Oreal because that is the most amazing lengthener. But it's whatever you like. The formulas are different and the brushes are mildly different as well. So... That would be up to you. Okay, that's my, my lengthener. I'm gonna let that dry. Um, I'm just gonna take, for argument's sake right now, I'm just gonna take um, my CoverGirl brow pencil and I'm just gonna very lightly line under my eyes because I don't like a harsh line there. Um, I have pretty big eyes, so if I go in with a shadow, sometimes it uh, just winds up dropping down too low and just becomes a little bit too obnoxious. So I just like to give my lower line just a little bit of dimension. And then this is just, that's just kind of nice and soft. Okay. Excellent. Oh, I'm going to take my lengthener one more time and I'm going to go after my lower lashes. Now I don't ever have a problem with, um, my lower lash mascara, like getting on my eyes. I don't know if it's the shape of my eye or the consistency, like how oily or not it is. Um, typically I use by um, MAC, the Giga Black tube mascara, but I'm able to use this guy, because the brush is so small, I'm able to use this guy on the bottom as well. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. Let's go into bronzer, hold please. Um, did I have to? <laughs> That looks silly. Okay, I'm gonna use by Jouer um, the Sunswept Bronzer. I talked about this bronzer in the Get Ready With Me All Jouer products, and I love it. I just love it. I might need the darker combo come summertime, 
Um, but I don't typically get that tan to begin with, so we'll see. But I use the darker shade right now on my cheeks, and I'm gonna take that lighter shade, because I'm now a double bronzer, um, and I'm gonna use that to just kind of warm up the rest of my face. It is a warmer bronzer, so that's nice. So the one that I use on the side, even though that warms me up, it also kind of adds a little bit of dimension because it can look a little bit more like a shadow. Um, it just blends so nicely. They're very firm, compact, so you don't necessarily run the risk of depositing too much product. Okay, so I like that. Um, before I forget, let's go in round two on my um, lashes. I've got my The Works. This is a wet mascara. Um, and I generally only apply it towards the base because I don't want the ends of my lashes to look too like gunkified. Um, but it just adds, when you use just a lengthening mascara first, it adds just a nice amount of volume and thickness to the overall lash. I, apparently when I open my eyes, uh, it, it interferes with my ability to talk at like a normal pace and volume and make a bit of sense. So, okay, love that mascara too. By the way, you can use this mascara alone. In fact, I probably recommend it. You don't actually need the other one to complement. Um, when it comes to blush, I am gonna use by Charlotte Tilbury, the Pillow Talk blush that recently came back to life. Um, you couldn't get it for a while. So it's got the pink around the outside and like a shimmer on the inside. You can blend it all together and use it just as a single kind of um, non-matte blush. Um, the pink portion already, by the way, I'm using a Goss makeup brush. This is also Kristen Games' fault. This is the number 11. I'm gonna use this for my blush. Oh my God, I love it. It's like 50 bucks. Um, I'm going to just go around the outside and not so much in the center because I don't want a ton of shimmer. Whatever shimmer it naturally gives me is good enough. Do you see this flawless application that this, bl that this blush brush gives me? Oh my gosh. It's like the happiest brush. It is a, well, it was too much, but we'll, we'll handle that in a second. It is a natural fiber brush as well. However, it is cruelty free which means no animals were harmed. I think, honestly, they were just brushed. And that's nice. And then they just harvested it <laughs> from, the, um, from the brush that they used. Um, so as I was saying, I'm, as my camera cut me off, I'm going to fix the additional blush that I feel like I have on my face right now because I don't like too much blush. Um, I have a choice to go in either with the um, Hourglass um, Veil Translucent setting powder, which has a little bit of shimmer, or, sorry, um, my standard, um, which my standard is usually the one by Hourglass. I use dim light, and I use it to kind of buff all over my face. But let's use the one by Hourglass, just since the, um, they're both by, by Hourglass. Sorry. Um, let's use the Translucent Loose, because what's cool about the Translucent Loose is that Oils were not used to press the powder together, and a pressed powder can tend to give you cake face if you don't use it appropriately. So, specifically now I'm gonna buff out. I'm gonna use the Hourglass Veil Translucent. It has a little bit of shimmer in it. I'm using by It Cosmetics the Wand Ball Brush. I'm using this brush specifically because it is a synthetic fiber brush, and I don't want it, I don't want natural fibers to pick up the, pow the product off my face. I just want them to blend it in. So, I go in with this every time after I've applied all my guys because it adds a little bit of luminosity and then also um, blends everybody together, dumbs them down. I apply a little bit more powder if I need to in different areas. And am I almost done? Oh, no, I need highlighter. All right, so now I'm all blended. I could have done highlighter before, but I'm using by MAC Whisper of Guilt. Do you remember back in the day when everybody was talking about how much they loved Whisper of Guilt and you couldn't get it? Well, now it's made a comeback and I got this to say about that. At the time, this probably was the best highlighter that they ever had. It is soft and creamy and blendable and light and just a beautiful highlighter at the time. Now, there are so many out there that 
either rival it or compare with it that I don't think Whisper of Guilt is as, not that it's not as fantastic, it's not as unique anymore. Like it was the thing because there was nothing else. Now it is the thing among many others. So honestly, if you've got, if you've got any of the highlighters by Anastasia, they are very comparable both in texture and subtleness. Um, Becca makes great highlighters as well, except they are a, a softer, creamier powder. Um, but you know, honestly, like if you've been buying makeup for a little while, you don't need to go out and buy that one. That's what I got to say about that. I was kind of annoyed. I was like, oh, this is what's so great. Like I've already got ones like this. On my lips, I'm going to use by Bite Beauty. This is the, um, the matte lip cream. I'm using the shade Amaretto. These are fabulous, phenomenal. Um, they feel good. I still have foundation on my lips. Meh. Um, I'm going to try to talk at the same time. Uh, they smell good. They're natural. I guess you could eat them. I guess you could eat them if you wanted to. <laughs> ah, the things that they claim. Um, but they're virtually, they are a longer lasting lipstick. Okay, hold. So the fact that they're like a pencil allows you to kind of draw like your lip line. Like I won't wear a lip liner with this. I feel like I never need to. Um, they smell really nice. They're almost like tro tropical. <laughs> um, but I love these. They're just super easy, super convenient. They are like, I don't want to say that they're, they're matte. They're not entirely matte, but they are like Matt's cousin basically. Um, so I'm going to go in by the new Fenty Gloss Bomb um, lip gloss. This is the shade Fussy, which is the slightly pink shade. I don't even like lip glosses. I love this, these lip glosses. I don't like lip glosses because they never stay, but let's add a little, a little bit of glamour. I'm just going to put it in the center. It's amazing alone and on its own as well. Let me just add that. Is that everything? Oh, I got to set it. Sorry, I don't have anything new. I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter. I'm going to make the funny face. So you can't see from behind that I've got some funny cowlicks going on back here. So for the purposes of the two dimensional viewing that you get today, this is the finished look. So I hope you enjoyed this. Get ready with me. Um, well, I got the chance to review some products. I hope that helps you make some decisions. Um, definitely leave me a comment down below whether or not my cool tone shadow look, which I think I never go for. Um, let me know if I should keep it, get rid of it, donate it, throw it out the window. I can't really throw Mark out the window. I love Mark. Um, but uh, maybe I'll just put him on display to look pretty. I don't know, but let me know what you think about the cool toned shadows and how they go with my eyes as well as my skin tone. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Check me out on Instagram. Um, look forward to my next videos if you're a subscriber. Um, that'd be great if you could join the G Crew. If you're not already a subscriber, I invite you to be. I am gonna be talking about some empties, my skincare, uh, that's all I got on the horizon right now. But if there are any videos you would love to see, also leave that as a suggestion in the description box below. Thanks again, guys. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.